Hey, Gina. Hey, Chris. How are you today? I'm good. You ready? Yeah. So the guy that we have on the podcast today is a very accomplished air streamer. He's been around him, I think, his whole life. But can you believe it? He's only 22. I think that's pretty impressive, actually. Yeah, it is. It, it really is. Mm -hmm. Hey, you know, we've been together a long time. And so, like, what would you have thought if I would have had a cool Airstream when I was 22 years old? Oh, well, well, you know what they say? Who? They. They? No. Mm -hmm. What What would they have said? If the trailer is a rockin'. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on tight, listener. It's the Riveted with Chris and Gina. I think this is going to be so much fun. Yeah, I mean, we are already, and I mentioned this before, but such a new podcast, and we already have celebrities on with we us. We do. And today we have a very uh, talented young celebrity with us. Yeah. I mean, sometimes when you're in a crowd, there's people that always stand out in a crowd, right? And and just those kind of people that are like, you, there could be 500 people in a field of, of Airstreams uh, at a rally and somebody always stands out, right? Absolutely. Well, that's who we have on today. Yes. This guy is well known in the Airstream community, in the circles. Uh, in the rallies, in the clubs, he has uh, he has just been one of those kind of people that when you meet him, you know that uh, he's unique. He's full of energy. Full of energy. Maybe and that's his age. Maybe maybe we're so old now we forget what that, that feels like. That could be part of it. <laughs> yeah. But but I think it's the passion for for airstream. I think it's his enthusiasm. I think it's he's there's just people in this world that are unique, and he's one of them. He and is. we're Glad to have him on the podcast. His name is James Shaw. Yes. And wait, can I say something? Yeah. And for all the ladies out there, he's really handsome. too. <laughs> and so he, we've known him for several years. We, we, we met him at a rally one time and, uh, he has, he has just rocketed through the Airstream community as a shining upcoming star. And yes, when you meet him, he makes an impression that yeah, that uh, he a great impression that lasts. Yeah. He's the current uh, president of the Vintage Airstream Club, and he's from the great state of Virginia. And he's an awesome guy, and he goes by James. James, hello, James. Welcome. Hello, guys. Thank you for having me on this amazing podcast. You know, from the very first time I ever met both of you back in Aluma, Lina, I believe it was North Carolina. Right. Yes. Uh, you know, I, I knew there was something special about you guys as well. You know, you you stand out in a very good way, a very positive way. Um, you've got this aura around you that's just amazing. You have a beautiful airstream. Um, you're not afraid to, you know, customize it and make it your own. And this wonderful beam of energy between us and, you know, our friend group, you know. Yeah. yeah. That brought us together. So I'm I'm very happy to know you guys and thank you for that amazing, amazing, amazing intro. Thank you very much, boy, Thank Gina. You. We have got him snowed, don't uh, we? Yeah. Uh, I know. What are, <laughs> we must have done something really special then. <laughs> wow. No, um, thank you for that. I, we feel the same way. I mean, uh, such cool things that you uh, are doing, have done. Uh, we can't wait to talk about a lot of it with you today. And um, we we hate that we haven't been able to uh, to rally and see each other as often as we sh we. Uh, should, should have. yeah. I think the last time I saw you guys was in Jackson Center at the Heritage opening rally. That's right. Yeah. Wasn't that an amazing event? It was an amazing event hosted by Airstream. Um, and you guys had, what I remember very vividly, um, was you guys had this flagpole that just lit <laughs> up the night sky. <laughs> um, and... It was just like, wow, it was like, that's cool. And then I, I had to know more about it. And then, you know, lo and behold, it was you guys that had it. And I was like, oh my gosh, I was like, my friends are here. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, there's lots of things that can make Airstream stand out from one another, but given the fact that a lot of them look similar, obviously, mm -hmm. When, when you're in a parking lot full of 60, 70 Airstreams, you know, Gene and I like to stand out from the crowd. 
And yep. uh, so that flagpole does it, boy. I mean, it's a beacon sticking straight up in the air with a bright uh, LED light. And now, um, come on, tell the truth now. What you really like about the flagpole is showing it off. Way, way home at night, you know? Yeah, that's true. What'd you say, James? Say that again? It, ho it helps when you need to be able to find your way home at night. Oh, for sure. Yes. Yeah. No, and I do like showing my pole off. You oh, do. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That's um, funny. It's what is it large and draws a crowd? What's the saying you always say? Uh, well, talks loud and draws a crowd, but but that's not what the poll does. <laughs> but but back to that event, and, yeah. and we'll. I mean, so <clears throat> I mean, you're a dignitary, James. So obviously, you were going to be invited. But for peons like Gina and I, uh, we got we got lucky. I mean, we just we, we were really part, did. part of the lottery drawing, and um, we were so excited because the first round we didn't get chosen, and then that that particular date got canceled or rescheduled, and then something happened that allowed us to be chosen on the next round, and we jumped on it. We were Boy, not, we are so thankful. We were not going to miss it. It was, I think, it was one of the the airstream events um that is going to go down in history as a very 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 cool airstream event that airstream um inc hosted i believe it was one of their very first um events that they had hosted in quite a long time to be a part of that event i think is very special for everyone that had attended it and the reason i was there is because they had invited me out to see um to present we have a 1960 airstream caravel and uh, they wanted that under the overhang with a, a few other people that had been um, selected to come out and show off their rigs. And it was just, it was a good time. Yeah, no, you're right. One off event that'll never happen again, exactly like it happened. Correct. And, and we are so glad we got to be a part of it yes. for sure. And, and what's kind of funny about that whole story is I'm in Jackson Center as we speak. I'm in the, I'm in the, the land of Airstream. Oh. Um, I am camped out back of the um, uh, international headquarters. Uh, so, yeah. That's cool. Wow. Are you there on official business? Um, not really official business. Uh, so I'm working on this project for the, um, the Vintage Airstream Club right now um, that is going to be in Sedalia. And we're basically... We're, we're making something special for our, our Halloween dance that I think the members, when they see it, are going to be taken back um and depending on when this podcast comes out if it's going to be before or after the international well wh wh which would you prefer we'll yeah. make it happen i i don't care it's up to you guys <laughs> <laughs> you guys have the i mean I'm, I'm happy to give you guys your your listeners a little bit of uh uh an inside scoop uh if you want to put it out like a week the international which i believe is in a month so we can make it happen yeah you're high on the list james we'll oh well, sure. thank you well yeah. basically what i've got going on right now is i had this idea to um to take people to a very special place where in there when they're in jackson center and um the i or when they're in sedalia and the idea is that when you walk into this uh this swine barn that is in the sedalia uh missouri fairgrounds the state fairgrounds um, I didn't want you guys, I didn't want people to feel like they were in a barn. I wanted them to feel like they were in a special place um, and I wanted to take them somewhere. So this idea was to make sets of Jackson Center's uh, pivotal buildings. Uh, and I'm, I've been working on them. I don't know if you guys know them. Um, the Schnettlers, uh, John and Jenny, they are absolutely amazing people. Uh, I took off one week of work last week to go and uh, start the the process and we thought we could get it done in like four days um but the project is 60 foot long and eight foot tall and uh, it's going to be uh on two sides so you're going to be walking down the street of jackson center at night oh wow. um and uh anyway each one has taken two people 18 hours so 36 hours of labor um for just one sheet and uh there's 10 of them so oh wow <laughs> So I moved the whole, we moved the whole art studio to Jackson Center um, to really finish it. And uh, yeah, it's exciting. Wow. That uh, something, I mean, with some of your past history, you bite off more than you can chew a lot, don't you? Yeah, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, that, I think that's what makes people different. You know, it's, I'm not, I'm not afraid to live outside of the box and I'm not afraid to go and, you know, try and achieve dreams. 
Uh, I mean, that's a great statement. And uh, given the fact that you've got your entire huge life ahead of you, you're going to, you're going to have an awesome one for sure with that kind of mindset. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. So I have, let's go back to the first time we met in a, at a Lumalana in Marion, North Carolina and the Airstream that you were in, I think that Airstream, you remodeled it by yourself as a gift to your mother. Is that correct? Uh, yeah. So along those lines, so basically what happened is, uh, my parents, when I was in 2014, so I was probably, well, I was in seventh grade, whatever that equates to age wise. And they bought a brand new trailer. And when you buy a new Airstream, you know, you start and in, you're interested in the history of Airstream. And so, you know, you start looking at these vintage models and, you know, how long they've been on the road and, you know, how they're American made and all of this stuff. So we wanted to buy a vintage one. So my dad um, bought a 1966 Airstream Caravelle. But in order for my mom to be like, ugh, why do we need another Airstream? He had to sell her on it, right? right. So, you know, it, because, you know, mom was like, why do we need two trailers? You know, we're only, you know, we can only camp in one at a time. Well, you know, anyway, dad sold mom on the idea of a trailer, but it was, had to be kind of at mom's, you know, leisure and design and all of this stuff. And she gave us this list of what her idea of a perfect night camping was. And, you know, that was a uh, really good night sleep. So it's got a tempur bed in the back, uh, queen size. It's a little... I believe 16 foot trailer. Um, so it's tiny. Uh, it's a caravel. And then um, she had to have a wine cooler. So we put a wine cooler under the bed. Um, she had to have a little uh, dinette area where she can sit and drink her morning coffee or a glass of wine at night. Um, and it just had to be super plush. So that's, and we wrapped it all in cedar, um, all local where I live. So it's all, all handmade, hand built. Um, and I was, I think 16 at the time when I built that trailer and then, uh, yeah, I traveled in it for quite a little bit trying to be comfortable towing, um, because that's a, that's a huge task for someone that's just learned to drive and, uh, yeah, kind of hit the ground running at, with that trailer. Yeah. That's yeah, awesome. That, that, that little camper was adorable. Long story. I've spent more nights in that thing than my mom has, but, um, you know, they do take it out. They do like it. Good. Well, but I, I guess, and we'll dive into, to all the other stuff you've done yeah. with restorations and stuff too. But like, so based on that story and the fact that, you know, you bought that second one, how many trailers do you have now? We have a dozen, so we have 12. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, oh, and she, she didn't want that second one. And now she's got, they got 12 on the screen. Yeah. It, so what happened is, you know, there's this thing called Illuminitis where you, you get bit and, <laughs> yeah. you know, you dive on in. And uh, we're at the point now where we could keep adding because we've got, we've got like a 13 acre horse farm. We kicked all the horses out and now we grow Airstreams. I like it. <laughs> so we're just at the point where it's like, do we have too many? Do we need to let a few go? Or, you know, if we yeah. want another one, should we let one go and just trade them out? Or, Well, are you remodeling all of them? Are you working on them? Or, um, Only two of them are gutted. The rest of them are usable. Okay. Yeah. And uh, about being usable, I, I guess, explain or, or tell us a little bit about how you guys are are repurposing some of them. I, I think I understand it right. Just looking at some of your socials and just knowing some of the stuff you've done, but you're creatively repurposing some of these for other reasons besides camping in them, right? Correct. So we've got one. Um, so we've got a family business that's a catering company. We predominantly do weddings and events. Um, and we wanted to find a way to tie our hobby into the business. So my dad had this idea of turning an Airstream into a bar and lounge. And so this was the third trailer at this point in time. That's how we sold mom on it again was, you know, hey, I can use this one for the business. So we um, uh, we went out and bought a 28 foot um, Ambassador 1965 trailer, gutted the entire thing, put a wraparound cedar bench 
um, on the basically both sides, the front, and then in the very back is a uh, a cedar bar um, that is got stainless steel on the inside, so it's all professional. Um, so you can you can bartend in the back, and you know we use it for coffee bars, we use it for um, bourbon bars, songwriters whiskey lounge. We do all sorts of fun stuff with it, and um, people love it. And it's a great it's a great way to use that iconic you know brand the Airstream um, and tie it into the business. Is that the one that I saw pictures of one time that you had a a beautifully decorated dinner table right down the center of it? Yes. So that picture is actually the same place I met you guys. That was at Aluma Lina last year. Um, I I wanted to bring it out and share the trailer with my friends. Um, so. We had a friend's giving in the trailer. Just had a good time. I slept on the floor because there's no bed in it. It was never designed to be camped in. So I, I took air mattresses and I, I used it as an aluminum tent, you know, at night. And then it was uh, a, a it was just a cool hangout spot during the day. And then um, you could come in there and enjoy a beverage at night before bed. So when you're talking about this whiskey bar and or this whole camper in general, this is something that you guys take to your events from your catering business that you have? Yeah, so we we have a, a 1909 uh, passenger train station as an event venue. And um, it's got this overhang, which is perfect for, the Airstream pretty much lives there, um, so it's never getting rained on, um, even though it is leak proof and all that good stuff, but it's just out of the weather pretty much. Um, so we use it there a lot and a lot of people enjoy it there. But if you were to have a party in your driveway or a party at your business, or you wanted to do something in your cul-de-sac, um, you know, we can, the trailer is obviously movable. I've been as far as Nashville, Tennessee with it, um, using it for big brands like Gibson guitar and, um, you know, they've rented it out. It, it, it moves and it's meant to travel, but we also use it, you know, stationary as well. Yeah. That's neat. It's beautiful. And I, I guess that concept of repurposing one for all the different ways you you uh you guys utilize it brings me to a, a question that i've i've wanted to ask you um because you're so well versed in restoring older airstreams you've been to a lot of rallies you've seen a lot of vintage airstreams you've seen a, you know a lot of them repurposed that kind of stuff but you mm -hmm. you know you never see somebody take a 30 year old box trailer and repurpose it into some other kind of unique thing. Right. But people have been doing that with Airstreams for a long time. Yeah. And, yeah. and with your, you know, knowledge of restoring them, your, you know, obvious passion for Airstream, can you like articulate or maybe point of point your finger at why that is that, that Airstream is the chosen brand for people to take one that's, 30, 40 years old and repurpose it for some other use? Yeah, I'll give it my best shot. So I believe the reason that so many people are attracted to this brand um, is because they are they are 100% American made. They've been American made their entire life. Um, they go all the way back to the 30s, you know, with the creator Wally Byam. And um, it all started with his dream. And, you know, he took them and absolutely beat them up on these around the world caravans and, um, you know, perfected the design. And uh, it's obviously a brand that is still in production today. Um, so, you know, there's it's definitely got a really cool history, um, whereas there aren't many other brands that have that kind of a history where the founder was really dedicated to the product. Um, and not necessarily just the dollar bill. Um, so I think that speaks for itself. Um, they are also, I don't want to say easy to work on, but they um, uh, everything was designed to go through the door. Um, it's not like all the furniture was put in it and then the shell was dropped on top. So you can really customize them on the inside and take everything out and you know make it your own, um, which I think has got a really cool appeal to a lot of people. Between you know really cool brand, Americana, and, you know, the customization and the ability to do that um, kind of speaks for itself. Um, they're easy to tow. You don't need, a, you know, a three-quarter ton truck to tow a vintage trailer, really even a 28-foot vintage trailer, um, whereas with, a, you know, some other brand, you potentially need a fairly-sized truck because they're very heavy, um, you know. So I think, I think it 
a bunch of those different factors kind of allow for the customization of them. Yeah. Yeah. And that, like, that's the part that is coming from the perspective of somebody that's choosing to take an Airstream and, and, uh, restore it for another purpose. What do you think, what do you think causes a person that is not familiar with the history of Airstream to just be gravitated towards the visual appeal or the, or the, just the, uh, just the Airstream. Yeah. Like they, they see it, it's sitting on the side of the street and it's, it's sexy and it's a, and it's a bakery, exactly right. you know, like yes. they're, they're selling donuts out of it. Like, yes, but it's sexy, honey. It's shiny. Yeah. It's smooth. It's got this appeal to it, you know, the brand, you know, in the sixties really worked on the advertising. And, you know, when you think, I think so many people chase that American dream of the Americana dream of living free. And, you know, I think Airstream has always kind of been that, um, you know, it's your, it's a home away from home. It's not, you're not going out and just camping in it, you know, you're making your home. And I think that they've always kind of been homes, um, you know, for people. So it's just got this, it's got this aura around it, this certain appeal, you know, it's got this sexy look that, you know, a lot of people are just gravitated to. And I think it, you know, it's an American dream. Yeah, that's true. Absolutely. Very cool. So it, with all the Airstreams that you own or have worked on, what are the age ranges? Like what's the oldest one to the newest one? Yeah, so I have got a, which isn't technically an Airstream, but it was designed by Wally. I've got a 1947 Curtis Wright, um, which is really cool. That one is currently gutted. Um, I'm not sure where we're going to take that one or what we're going to do with it yet, but it's going to be cool when we finish it. Um, and then I've got a 1948 Airstream liner, um, which is, you know, the first year that uh, Wally had really branched out and made Airstream a proper company. Um, so ours is a January built model. Um, and we took that one and restored it 110% period correct. Um, all the furniture is original in it. All the, the paint, it's been repainted on the inside, but it was painted the exact color um, that it was when it rolled off the line, all color matched all the way down to the finest detail um, for that. So we, uh, we were in touch with Joe Poplinski, the Airstream historian, and also the club historian, and were able to um, uh, nail down that exact color. So it doesn't, it's not peeling or anything on the inside. It's all, you know, it's all the original skin, but um, because it was originally painted on the inside. And wow. then um, it's got all the original furniture. We refinished all of that. My dad did the majority of that refinishing work. Um, it's sitting on a brand new frame, brand new axle, brand new brakes and all that good stuff, brand new subfloor. And then everything from up is all original um, all the way down to, the uh, the clothing that is in the wardrobe is all from the 40s. The plates, cups, um, we've got old salt and pepper shakers, old food containers. We've got original cutlery. We've got the we've got uh, bedding that is all from the 40s. Pillows that are from the 40s. Radios that are from the 40s. I got guitar in there that's from the 40s. Fishing pole. We really wanted you to step in there and make and it feel like a time capsule. I think that is. Um, I think that's. It, there's something special about that is, you know, going in there and, you know, kind of envisioning the way Wally would have been using it um, and whatnot. Wow. I think um, you guys have a compulsion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <We're good. laughs> you know, it's, as, as our delivery driver says, because, you know, we're big eBay shoppers um, uh, and, you know, a lot of stuff is always coming from from eBay and the eBay driver says it's Christmas every day, but it's kind of funny. Yeah, I, I bet so. It. So that's your oldest one. And then, and then you move forward up until yeah. what? So from there we jump to uh 1960. That is our 1960 Caravelle. It's the first year of the Caravelle. Um, that is a custom international land yacht package, super cool, unique trailer. Um, and then we jumped to 1964 mm -hmm. and we have a 1964 Globetrotter, which my younger brother, Toby, Toby Shaw, um, that is his trailer. He did a large portion of the restoration on that one. Um, and I kind of guided him here and there trying to, you know, show him a little bit of the ropes, but he really put his own design, heart and effort into it, which is really cool. Um, just to see him, you know, follow through with all that. Um, and then we jumped to a 1964 uh, Globe Trotter um, that we just use as a, uh, a storage unit for the catering company. 
It houses all of our uh, tables, chairs, China flatware, glassware, um, and all of that good stuff. It's parked next to the train station, um, and it's you know designed to be able to move, and I can take it off site and always have all of our stuff in there. It's nice and organized and clean. Um, so that's kind of a cool trailer, um, just tying that into the company. And then we've got a 1965 Airstream Bar and Lounge, which is the one I was talking about earlier. Um, that is the an Ambassador. And then a 1966 Caravel. Um, that one is the little Caravel we were also talking about earlier. That's Mama's trailer. And then um, we jump again to 1975, where we have a, uh, I've got an Airstream Argosy, um, which might be kind of a fun conversation here in a little bit. Uh, that is a really cool trailer. I call it my parts trailer. Um, just because all the parts that you get from random restorations or people give you or you buy cheap at rallies or whatever the case may be, um, kind of get dumped into that one. Uh, and then we jump again to 1983, first year of the wraparound windows that Airstream actually used on their trailers. Um, in the front, we have that one. That one is also currently gutted. Um, and I might turn that one into another bar and lounge. Um, we'll, we'll just have to see maybe a mobile speakeasy of some sort. And then we jump again to 2015, which is an international 23-foot land yacht the trailer that started it all, the one that my parents bought uh, very first. And then we kind of jump again a little bit to 2021. No, 2020, my, parent, my mom's trailer now that she travels in with my dad is a 28-foot globetrotter. And then uh, last but not least, a 21 uh, base camp 16X. Uh, that is also kind of very pivotal role in um, uh, my Airstream journey. Yeah, I want to. Mm -hmm. I've, I've got some questions to ask you about that one. Because I, I uh, understand that's a pretty awesome uh, trailer for you and some um, some experiences you've had with it. But it it appears that because of the list, over half of them are older, obvious older yeah. restorations and stuff, which. Uh, you know, you're dealing with vintage trailers, uh, older historical type stuff, restorations, you know, period time of, of the forties, all that kind of stuff. So it, it should make you very qualified, obviously to be a member of the vintage Airstream club, <laughs> but I believe, am I right in saying that you're the youngest ever president of that club? Yes, you are. So I am 22 years old. Most people think I'm a little older than that, but I'm not. Um, I'm 22. I am the youngest by a, a, quite the long shot. Um, it's going to take someone like my younger brother or someone else to even beat that record if they want, um, which is kind of funny. But I'm very serious, and I think the board has has seen that through my my progression. I hopped on the board when I was 18. Um, as third vice president, and I've built my way all the way up to where we're at today. And, you know, I'm, I bring a different skill set to the board, you know, with having an events history um, through my 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 catering company. So being able to know an event, we do over 100 events a year. So, you know, I, I it's in my blood. I've probably been, I've probably done over a thousand weddings. So I kind of understand the heartbeat of, you know, a, a proper event and how everything should unfold, timeline. And, you know, being able to dump some of that information and use it for the Vintage Airstream Club has, I think, been really beneficial. But at the same time, I've learned a lot through some of my uh, my, my co-board members. There's no politics. It's all, we, we, we're all friends at the end of the day. We all bounce ideas off of each other. And, you know, we, we love camping with each other and we love, uh, we love serving for the community. Yeah, that's great. 22. Yeah. 22, Chris. Yeah, it's awesome. It's great. Wow. Nuts. Yeah, it is, you know, but you're an ancient soul, you know, you've got a lot of history um, behind you already at 22 and to know that you are part of this iconic Airstream brand has got to be a phenomenal experience for you, right? Oh, 100%. You know, I, I mean, I, I love the brand, you know, it's, uh, I, I eat, breathe, sleep it. Um, I'm in an Airstream just about every day. Uh, you know, doing something, you know, whether it's a small project or work, doing some computer work or whatever the case may be. Um, it's kind of just, uh, it's a, it's a comfortable it's place. Home. Yeah. It's home. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So we were talking about the different year models that you own or have worked on. 
And I have seen so many different things. So I have to ask you this. If you think about the interiors of the Airstreams or, Mm -hmm. you know, camping in those time periods, what is the most ridiculous camping fashion trend that you've noticed or ever seen or heard of with, with not just Airstream, but in general, with all the knowledge and experience that you've had the past few years, like design trends. Yeah. Like what, it's gotta be some kind of ridiculous things. Like you're like, why is this even here? Or why this color, or this uh, item, you know, what, what do you think's out there that is just crazy? Crazy. I mean, not to poo poo on any other brands or anything like that, but I, I, I personally think slide outs are a little crazy. I think they're cool. Airstream did them for a little bit, but like in my head, you know, there's so many moving parts and components in place of, you know, water being able to come in and leak. I think slide outs are, are a little nuts. I think I get the idea, you know, you're doubling your space and still being able to roll a, a home down the road. But, you know, as far as longevity um, and, you know, trying to protect your, protect your investment, unless you really know what you're doing and are storing it protect properly and, um, you know, you're really treating that thing with a lot of care. Um, it's kind of a crazy design feature. Really, all brands, they used to put carpet on some of the walls. Um, I get it. Back in the day, that was all the rage and, you know, is carpet everywhere. Um, but in today's modern age, that's a little, it's just, a, you know, it, we phased out of that era. Carpet on the walls. Yeah, I do remember seeing carpet on the wall. Could you imagine not only carpet on the walls, but it being absorbed from all of the cigarette smoke from oh. back then? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's bad. <laughs> all sorts of crazy stuff. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm so thankful that people don't smoke like they used to. I bet you've uh, come into some Airstreams that have some odd odors that you Ooh. probably gag out. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've, I've got it a few. A few that, um, you know, you find, you know, where critters have been living in them or whatever the case may be. And it's one of those things where it's like you shower three times a day just to try to try to keep the germs away because it's uh, when stuff's been living in it and then it's baked in the hot sun. And then, you know, it's uh, maybe has a little bit of water intrusion somewhere and um, it gets steamy in there, It you know. Like, but, but it's really just like if you leave anything and put it outside and, you know, forget about it and, you know, let it just rot. Um, you know, and you open it up 10 years later, you know, anything's going to do that. Mm-hmm. And I, I can only imagine like your before and after picture catalog of taking oh, yeah. pictures. I love and, doing that. Yeah. Like with your guys, uh, eye for style and design and just, you know, high end, uh, appointments and so forth that we've seen of some of your other examples, I can only imagine your before and after pictures. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. There, there's some, it, it's quite breathtaking just the how much you can change something or alter it and uh make it your own but also giving it a little bit of that style and modernization but you know keeping with a little bit of that classic touch yeah right well what's so good about those before and after uh documentations is when someone sees like like us for instance like when we saw that first airstream of of theirs and we walk in it we're like oh wow this is beautiful great job but we don't know what it looked like or smelt before. like or felt like before we're seeing the after product so having that documentation is perfect especially if you're doing a restoration for someone or if you sell something that you've done it's good for people to see hey this is where it came from and this is what it looks like today yeah correct but also to just to add to that um a lot there's a lot of purists out there that airstream purists that are they're like why would you ever alter the inside of an airstream why would you ever you know put all brand new cabinetry and all this stuff in a vintage model you know you're you're stri- you're taking you're stripping the history of it um but you know a lot of trailers didn't have you know great caretakers throughout their life and um you know the inside of them needed some work or whatever and um at that point and stage in its life instead of sending it off to a you know a scrap yard to be worth nothing and maybe get 500 bucks um you know you can give it this new life a new breath breath of air um and you know i've, I've played on both sides of the fence obviously with restoring to period correct but also restoring completely opposite and you know giving it our own style um and i think there's a beauty in both of it yeah no that's okay. true and that's that's respect that's respecting the the trailer in its own right just having that thought instead of yeah. just sending it off to be scrapped for sure and then, and then also you know 
there's a lot of people out there like they you don't you can't find stuff that airstream produced you know from the 60s and 70s it's really hard to find like interior pieces and whatnot so you know if you do have pieces that are still in really great condition um the idea is you save that and um hopefully you give it to someone instead of trying to charge them for it and uh you know you're helping some and in someone else's project restoration that they're trying to take their trailer to more of a a period correct time oh, um yeah. so and then you know you're just helping out the community and that trailer is um doing a bunch of different things um because i've received a lot of parts over the years both you know for free or i bought them and um whatnot and you know i'm trying to let some of those parts live another life and if someone comes out and reaches out to me and says hey have you seen this part or piece um, you know, I'll say, yeah, I have it. And, you know, what's your shipping address? And I'll ship it to you for free. Um, as long as it's not like a frigging couch, you know, yeah. <laughs> it's like the, it's like, uh, the donating organs, right? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it's a, not like that at all. Well, no, it, it, it is. I mean, it, it's <laughs> parts and pieces, you know, I yeah. see, I see where you're coming from there. <laughs> yeah. And I'd never thought about it from that, 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 that aspect. But like, if you take something that you you feel like is a good part but you don't want to use it in your restoration don't yeah. just scrap it because somebody else may absolutely need it yeah so that makes perfect sense. 10 percent. you know there's there's a web there's a facebook group out there called the vintage airstream um parts uh that you can uh you can post your you know what you don't think you're going to be using and odds are there's going to be somewhere and someone in that airstream world that's going to be interested in it and be able to use it or put it in their inventory for you know future projects very cool. Don't you wish you had like x-ray vision that you could just fly over barns and sheds and stuff and just look oh, down and cool see, stuff. yeah, see all this cool stuff and go, oh, it's just sitting there, you Find know, it. serving no purpose. Let's bring it out. Yeah. I think that's why I love driving, you know, through America so much is like and taking a back road every once in a while or, you know, trying to take back roads. It's, you know, it's kind of cool seeing what, you know, has made it out where and um you know it, it does make you a little sad when you see something and it's been completely forgotten about but yes. at the same time you know it, there's stuff is still out there and it's still easy to find you know these vintage trailers and, and vintage airstreams and um uh i think a lot of people think in order to get into um this world of airstream you have to be a millionaire or something which is completely the opposite um you can get into this airstream world um fairly cheap um, as long as you're willing to put the work in. And I think mm -hmm. that is a kind of an interesting conversation. That's a great point. And, uh, yeah, I mean, expand on it a little bit if you want. I mean, it's because yeah. you're right. There's a, with the beautiful new designs rolling off the, the factory floor now and looking at, you know, their marketing and their website. And I mean, it is a, an upscale brand and it's, it comes at a pretty noticeable price point brand new. Um, but the fact that it's the same brand as it was for 80 years, yep. take, you're exactly right. Get getting one that you might need to do some refurbishment or restoration, then you can still become an Airstream owner without the high price tag entry point. What's so cool about Airstream and all of that good stuff is, you know, it's got a really cool sense of community behind it. So that's a huge reason to want to get into the brand. Um, and there's nothing wrong with buying a brand new Airstream. I'm quite frankly sitting in a 2015 right now, the, um, very first trailer that my family ever bought and uh it's still brand new basically on the inside it's 10 years old and really hasn't aged so you know you're buying a thing that's quality but at the same time the opposite flip of that coin if you know you don't want to spend you know that you know whatever that dollar amount is that you're looking at and you want to still experience this thing called airstream um there's trailers out there um that you can still find for three to five thousand dollars that may or may not need some restoration or you might be able to go and camp in them today if you get lucky like i have a 1975 argosy that uh we found in west virginia paid like 2000 2500 bucks for it something like that and we you know we had to put the work in we had to pull it out of the mud with a, a truck that was then attached to a tractor because it was so stuck wow we towed it home took it to the car wash sprayed the entire thing off so mom didn't freak out when she saw, you know, that I was bringing home this thing that clearly needed a lot of work. We cleaned it up on the outside and we're like, wow, we have this, you know, cool little gem. I've probably got maybe $5,000 invested in this thing and I could go camping in it and take it probably across the country today if I really wanted to. I did take everything out of it. 
um, all the way down to the, the frame. I slowly, you know, inventoried everything, saw what I had, saw what I didn't have, saw what needed to some, you know, extra work, if something needed to be reframed or whatever the case may be. Um, and, you know, I, I probably spent two, three years on it, on and off. You know, I never made it a main project. Um, it was just more or less something fun to, to see how far I could go with as little money as possible because I had this idea of, you know, you don't need to spend a lot of money to get into this thing. Over the course of three years, I would go and piddle with parts and, uh, um, you know, see what worked, see what didn't work, kind of made it my own. You know, it's, uh, it, it's a great entry point if you want to see if this brand is for you or if this lifestyle is for you. And then, you know, once you've done that, you, you might fall in love with it and go, okay, I understand why people are paying these, you know, prices. Now I feel comfortable going out and doing that or quite the opposite. And you might say, you know what? I found something here that's really cool. I've really cleaned it up. I've made it my own. Um, and you know, this is just gonna, this is just enough for me. Um, and what's cool about it is, you know, within the club and the Airstream club, you can, as long as it says, you know, as long as it is part of the Airstream family, um, you know, you're more than welcome to join in on any of the events, you know, there's not any specific trailer that you have to have, you know, they're all yeah. fair game. You can pull yeah. something out of the grass or a field that's been sitting there for 15 years and technically go and start camping today, um, you know, in the Airstream club. And the, the thing that you're talking about with the, um, the fact that that Argosy you've got, well, let's just round up and say you got less than $10,000 invested in it mm -hmm. and you're able to use it as your primary camper. You, you're, uh, immersed in the brand, you're immersed in the lifestyle and you know, it's, got all the appointments you need to to camp in but yep. you're not you're not spending huge amounts of money and to spend ten thousand dollars on another brand of rv you're not going to get much for it well yeah so and that's the other side of that coin as well so what's cool is you know odds are as long as you've done a pretty good job at whatever you know the restoration or you're doing or where you're putting your money in the trailer um if you find out you know a month two months, five years, 10 years after you do it and invest that money that, you know, this, this thing really wasn't for me. You can probably sell it and get all your money out. If not, maybe a little bit more. Right. Whereas, you know, if you're going out and you're buying this, you know, just some other brand, uh, odds are, if you have $10,000 in it, you know, you're kind of just throwing money out the window to have something that you think is cool. They hold their value really well. And as long as you're making smart decisions and smart um, investments in the trailer as far as design wise, mechanical wise, axles, whatever the case may be, wherever you're dump, you're putting your money, odds are you're going to be able to get it back out as long as you don't destroy it. But I feel like that's Airstream in general, Argosy, old, new, what, whatever it's Airstream in general. Yeah. Brand new models. It's the same thing. You know, you invest your money into it and, you know, two, three years after you buy it, a month after you buy it, you know, odds are you're going to be able to pretty much get what you have invested in it out. Right. We interviewed someone not too long ago. Actually, it was, um, it's our third episode, uh, Bruce and Marsha, and they talked about their first Airstream that they purchased and they sold it a couple years later and got the exact same price that they paid for it, if I'm not mistaken. Isn't well, that right, Chris? They didn't sell it, sell it. They traded it in. Or traded it and in and still got the, got the same. The exact same amount. price that they paid for it. Yeah. And so they had it for a couple of years and wasn't out any money right. either way. Let's kind of turn this just a little bit because you were talking about you would get in that Argosy now and take it across the country and not think twice about it. But if I recall, you did take a base camp across the country on a solo trip right yes yeah so i was the whole reason we bought the base camp was because i and i learned to drive um in a jeep uh wrangler that was my that was my primary car uh that i learned to drive in and we wanted to i didn't i didn't really feel comfortable driving a truck or anything like that at that point in time never had really done it didn't really like big vehicles which is kind of funny because i drive a big truck now but <laughs> <laughs> the base camp was really appealing because it had this off-road kind of sense of adventure tied behind, you know, you can tow it with almost any vehicle. So I, we bought it to be towed behind the Jeep and um, I did it for a little bit and really realized that's when it's like, okay, you know, this tow vehicle discussion really is important. And, um, uh, 
not to get into that because that's like politics on you know in the trailer world 110 percent absolutely <laughs> i decided that you know the jeep just wasn't cut for the for the trip so um my dad let me take his truck and he drove the jeep um around while i was gone and i went across the country um in a truck in the base camp i spent five weeks out on the road um went from virginia all the way to california you know and visited you know airstream rallies that were out on the road um visited a bunch of national parks and really immersed myself in kind of a, a taste of full-time living but not really obviously um because it was i was only five weeks but um it was kind of that first that first you know real taste of not just going out for a week and then going back home yeah so it was real a really neat experience and i've since done it again congratulations yeah because you did this on a solo trip yep so when you're on the road, do you like to navigate with a map and compass or do you rely on GPS devices? Um, that's a great question. So when I went out 19 years old, James Shaw, I, uh, and I have a list of all my wishes as I was on the road, I was like, I wish I had this, or I wish I had this next time I do this, I'm definitely having this blah, 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 blah. I had only used my phone, Apple maps. I made it all the way across the country and I made it all the way back and just used Apple Maps. And quite frankly, I kind of still do the same damn thing today. I guess if I was really in a bad pinch, I could have used the onboard GPS and the truck, but those kind of suck. When I when I went across the country the second time and I took my younger brother, Toby, so that wasn't a solo trip. Um, he was kind of my navigator, so to say. So he would, you know, hop on the phone and tell me, you know, when the next gas exits were, rest areas, you know, if there was any upcoming weather threats that I needed to slow down for so I could stay out of hail or whatever the case may be. He really helped with that. But as far as navigation goes, we just used Apple Maps. Yeah. I'm sure you guys have a crazy, you know, setup and you guys are bomb proof and all this good stuff, but I'm not quite on your level. So, so maybe you, what you guys do. <laughs> no, well, I, absolutely not. I mean, to be honest with you, we do the exact same thing you do. But I, I would like to say that, um, <laughs> you know, I know where you're going with this. I, I mean, Gina, he's he's 22 years old. He probably doesn't even know what a compass is. Oh, sure. He does. <laughs> yeah, yeah. North, south, east, west, all that yeah, good stuff. Yeah. Yes. Um, like an old manual compass. But no, yes. I'll be honest with you. We, Gina and I, uh, I mean, we've been traveling full time now, seven years, uh, traversed the country numerous times, and uh, we are 100 percent committed to Apple Maps. Absolutely. That's all we use. And and uh, we'll we'll take turns navigating. Um, a lot of times we're navigating in real time rather than like leaving the Jeep, leaving the map on for 500 well, miles. So oh, no, we'll, we never do that because we'll, there might be a turn we want to take. And yeah, if Apple tells us we can't, then and <laughs> and we've gotten so accustomed to to using it that we we don't use Google Maps mm -mm. much anymore. Never. I, I used to drive a, a truck commercially, you know, over the road tractor trailer in my in my 20s. But when I was your age, actually, I drove a truck tractor trailer for a couple of years. That's awesome. And this, was, this was before cell phones, bef you know, there probably was GPS around then. I'm not sure, but I didn't have one. So it was paper maps and all that kind of stuff for me. I, I don't have any uh, worry anywhere in the countries that we've been that mm -hmm. we would just be dead in the water, not knowing what to do. Well, we've been all over the country and knock on wood, we have not had one incident yeah. at all with our mapping. It's I think it's important to be, you know, be aware as you're driving off the the main roads and going onto those beaten paths. Okay, I took a left here or right here. And kind of just, you know, being mentally aware of, okay, I've got service right now. I'm about to go into an area where, you know, I don't think there's going to be very good coverage. And um uh absolute worst thing happens. I just go back to where last place I knew that I had service. So kind of being aware of that, I think is important as well. No, that's, that's true. And not completely relying on it, but I, I do rely very heavily, um, on, on Siri taking me wherever I need to go. Yeah. Well, that's good. <laughs> yeah. um, well, okay. So, so here's, what's funny. And, and I'm going to ask this one last question as we start to wrap up, but, yeah. and it kind of goes along with these lines, you know, we just talked about compasses and 1947 trailers and you know the 
the GPS and Apple Maps and Siri and all this kind of stuff, right? And just in the the 50 years, 80, 60 years, whatever, the amount of change that's happened and Airstream's been around that entire time, right? So, yeah. so my final question to you is, and, uh, you know, just however you want to answer, it's fine. But at, at your age and the amount of experience and, and time you've already got invested in having an Airstream in your life, what do you think your future is going to bring with regard to Airstream? That's a great question. I think Airstream is provides me a, a sense of my own home away from home. It, it provides me my own space um, to be able to go out and do things and not, you know, striving to go and get an apartment like a bunch of people my age or I'll, I'll probably never be able to full time. I don't want to ever say never, but um, just with having the company back at home, that's a very manual thing and having to always keep hands on with uh, projects and staffing and events and all that good stuff. But I think I, what I would like to potentially do is get a piece of property somewhere, maybe build a really nice barn, small, tiny house of some sort as a nice home base, but really embrace the Airstream as a home as it is and kind of full time in that way. And, and then, you know, be able to take off when I can, but also having a, a place to call home, um, kind of living a more minimalistic, simple, uh, but still high quality of sorts, elegant lifestyle. I think, you know, this thing called Airstream allows me to live a smaller, simpler life, more of a green thumbprint on the earth and um, uh, being able to to travel at my own free will and um but also having that sense of home yeah that's great and 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 that we like hearing you say simple minimalistic type of living because you're exactly right i mean i i feel for you at at your age trying to decide on how to pull off you know housing or or just the well i take that back the way that you choose to live and and have housing there's so yeah, many, I mean, so many options and opportunities within uh, uh, using an airstream for that. That is just as nice as having a a house with a picket fence and neighbors. Yeah, and I mean, I think I think I've always kind of lived outside the box. I've always viewed the world a little bit differently, and I just I don't I don't have a drive right now, at least to you know spend a lot of money on you know renting something or um, putting a down payment on something. I'd rather try and live simpler, freer in my trailer and my Airstream that is and, and yeah. save money and, and, you know, really try and future plan that way. I don't know. It's just a more free way of living. And I think, uh, I think there's something beautiful to that. So what's in your near future, what you got coming up, maybe through the end of the year or first part of next year? Yeah. Right now, me personally, I've been, um, uh, really working on the vintage club, you know, trying to find more ben membership benefits and uh, trying to plan more smaller rallies throughout the country and not just focusing on our main one big one. So, you know, I've got a bunch of stuff like that running through my head and we're on a path there. And I think uh, after Sedalia, we're going to, you know, people are going to start seeing more uh, vintage Airstream club rallies popping up in their in their neck of the woods. And it's not just the one big main one. So that's something we're really pushing for this year. Um, and it it seems to be really working and stuff's getting planned, which is really exciting. Um, but at the same time, I'm also working on, you know, trying to build, you know, the company back at home and, uh, you know, really, you know, make my place in that and, uh, and, and work on all of that good stuff. So that's good fun. Yeah. You have fast become a, uh, like really high end, uh, craft bartender, right? Craft cocktail bartender. Yeah, you know, we've got a, a cool speakeasy back at home that I completely built and designed. Um, we've had an ABC license and all that good stuff for a very long time. So being able to tie some of, you know, uh, my passions and things I'd seen into the company um, has been really exciting. It's been open just about for a year now as a, you know, extension to what we do. And it's not open to the public. It's just for private use events. So it's the only bar on the East Coast that you can rent privately. Um, that I know of. Wow. Um, so you can fill it with your own friends instead of going into the space where, you know, it's a bunch of strangers. So it's really cool. Um, it's fairly high end. It's targeted more towards doctors and lawyers and um, business people, but it's also targeted towards, you know, uh, wed weddings and birthday parties and anniversaries and all that good fun stuff as well. So um, you That's know, great. Just, just trying to think, you know, outside the box constantly and, um, you know, be new and inventive and innovative and all that good stuff. Yeah, 
That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. We're, we're going to wrap up, but I, I do have to say this. And, and um, I don't know if you're a fan or not, but I'm a huge fan. A very famous guy named James. Okay. Mr. James Hetfield, the lead uh, guitarist of Metallica. Nice. Love guitars. He goes by, by James. Everybody calls him James. So you and he are like the only James I know. Well, thank you. I, I greatly appreciate that. You know, great man. He's been around for a very long time. <laughs> <laughs> you and never I, know what's going to come out of his mouth. And I really don't know James Hetfield, but I mean, you know. Well, you know, James Stroll, and that's all that's important. <laughs> that's exactly right. You guys again for you know having me on this amazing podcast. I think you guys are going to do exponentially well, and I I'm excited to hopefully be invited back again. Yeah, you know, like we were kind of talking before this, and uh, absolutely, you know, maybe we can we can work out where you guys get a uh, some cameras set up, and you know, we go go with a video. I yeah. think that would be amazing. No, for sure, we'll do that. Maybe we'll uh, we'll do it in your whiskey lounge or something. <laughs> Yeah, that would be cool. That would be cool. Or um, uh, we 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 do have plans to do some video uh, podcast um, nice. in the future, and we'll, we'll be sure to have you on for that. And hopefully, um, we might see you at a rally or something this fall. Are you going to be in Alumalana this year or no? As I get there that uh, Monday before, and I believe it starts on like Saturday, so I get there Monday, right. and I will stay through Friday. Okay. And then I'll leave Friday morning uh, and go home to work. Cool. Well, we'll mm -hmm. um, we'll be up there before it starts. To, uh, we'll cross paths. I'm, I'm sure. Sure, we will. But we're gonna we're gonna be there for sure. So. All right. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing you guys down the road. Yeah. Thank, thank you, you again so, so much. much. This was amazing, and just spending this time with you again, James. Just just if people don't love Airstream or don't even know about Airstreams, after a conversation with you, they're like, where can I find one? Absolutely. Like, I got to go right now. Yeah. Thanks, James. We appreciate it. Thank you. You guys have an amazing rest of your day. You yep. too. We'll see you down the road. Gina, when I grow up, I want to be like James. I agree. Yeah. I, I totally agree. Yep. 12 Airstreams. That's awesome. Let's do it. All right. Well, listener, we uh, hope you enjoyed this episode. We can't wait to uh, have you back on another one. Until next time.